I've just spent eight glorious days in one of my favorite cities in the world, Budapest, but now it's time to head off to Belgium. But I've decided to first bring you down to this museum of sweets and selfies. It's a pretty simple concept, but it's quite effective and uh, more than a bit of fun. Although I don't think I'm their target market. This is more, I'm thinking, 15 to 21 year old girls. So this is a, a mock swimming pool with all these little plastic beads. It could be about 30 centimetres deep or a foot, and it's quite impressive. Oh shit! <laughs> and rest assured, this is fun for both kids and adults. And for the record, let me remind you that you look good. And I believe the swing will hold my weight. It's a really simple sort of business. It wouldn't have cost them much to set up, but um, they've got a number of people going through here. Not that I like museums, and it's not really a museum. It is a lot of fun. And this is the Selfie Museum tube station. Well, that was good fun at that museum. Now it's off to the airport. And I've got to tell you, I'm pretty dark about rentalcars.com and Hertz. In short, I booked a car to pick up at 8 a.m. in Brussels. My flights got changed, so I wanted to change it to 8 p.m. So 12 hours later, it should be a simple matter of changing it, but you can't. Rental cars says you have to contact Hertz in Brussels. Brussels don't answer their phone. Eventually got through to someone who said, yes, we'll change it from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Rang back a few hours later just to ensure it had been done. Hadn't been done. Still getting the run around. So I don't know, when I get to Brussels, I, have, I don't think I'm gonna have a car. Big thumbs down to rental cars and Hertz in this instance. Hello. He's not very happy, that bloke behind us. It's all happening here on the way to the airport. So I am pleasantly surprised because I've rolled up here a good three and a half hours early for my flight because Tonya's is two hours prior and I can check in at this hour and then both of us can go through the airside and sit in the same lounge. Well I'm sitting here in one of the priority pass lounges. Now there are three other lounges in this side of the airport. I've been into all three. There's another priority pass lounge, this one here, which is a bit brighter colours and slightly larger. And then there's this MasterCard lounge, which is okay, but I think the one I'm gonna spend more time in is this one. So I like this machine here because I can have half soda, half orange juice, mixes it in here. No. Off we go on Brussels Air. You're an okay, Elon. Let's see what today's going to be like, huh? Okay, I'm on board this A319-100 aircraft. Uh, business class is some... Um, what have we got? There are three rows in business class, and the middle seat, as usual, is just simply blocked out. Uh, but if you get the front row, you get these hard dividers between each seat. You don't get them uh, in the rows behind. This aircraft's about 17 years old and I know that because I got onto air fleets. I put in the plane's registration and it brings up all the details. Good to be back in Belgium, it's 8.05 p.m. and I've got to go and grab my car and I want to thank my son for actually sorting out a drama. It took him many phone calls and it wasn't easy with rental cars and Hertz. Now I'm going with Sixth, which I've had mixed results with. Just walking past this currency exchange I had to laugh because at the bottom of the sign it says here best rates. Well I can tell you it's best for them. It's not best for you. That's a big spread. Hi. It's 8.28 p.m. and there's uh, three people in front of me here. Uh, well, two now, somebody's just left. It's always interesting to see how long this takes. Uh, my experience says they take at least 10 minutes per person. So one staff member can see just six in an hour. Isn't it amazing the difference one person can make? That was Sebastian back there, and you'll see him in my uh, outro. He was exceptionally quick, 
very helpful, friendly, and totally destroyed my impression of Sixt. And what did I end up with? Uh, a little black BMW SUV. I don't even know what model that is, but it's bigger and better than the Audi 1, Audi A1 that I was originally going to get. So off we go to Spa. Hello. Hello. Good evening. I was here last year and I'm back again. Yes, so what's your name please? Elman Kim. Well this is the De La Source Hotel and I've stayed here for the last couple of years. Yeah, I've got the, the ordinary view out that side. I'd like the view which is actually over the track because this hotel is probably, um, I'm guessing, 250 metres away from the entrance to turn one at the track, which is pretty handy. It's uh, easier for me to edit back here in my hotel room than it is to edit in the media centre. It's a shorter walk. And downstairs here in the lobby, it's quite a lively scene. And it's not uncommon to see if one drivers having a game of pool over here or dining in the restaurant. Spa and Frankerschamp are two rather small cities lying around the racing track. Spa is called the Pearl of the Ardennes. It's a cosy city with around 10,000 people living there and with plenty of places to visit in and around the city. The name of the city, as you might have guessed, does have something to do with the spa mineral water. Its environment's rich in water and the city can't be prouder to show that off. Close to the spa, you can find this cave, the longest underground cave in the world, accessible to tourists. It's chilly inside though, but the cold is worth it because it's quite magnificent. If you want to enjoy more nature and go outdoors, there's a beautiful hike following the river. Spa and Frankerchamp live and breathe F1, so it's no surprise that hotels and restaurants are F1 themed. An example is the Pit Lane Lodge fully decorated, showing parts of F1 history. And this restaurant is not the only one. In the city, multiple F1 themed restaurants and cafes can be found. In the city of Spa, you'll enjoy hours just walking around the town, from landmarks to nature, and plenty of small shops. For those serious racing fans, Spa has plenty to offer. Road Vintage Experience offers you the opportunity to drive around in old classic cars and get a tour in the shop, showing the ins and outs of the cars. Close to the track, you can find the Formula One Museum. There you'll find cars that have driven on F1 and IndyCar tracks, real race suits, trophies, wheels, and the history of F1 explained. Right next to the circuit, you'll find RACB karting. Professionals train here, but you can also book a heat with your friends and have some fun on the circuit. This region is picturesque and has a long racing history. I have to go to bed now, but I'm going to invite you to like this video, please. If you haven't subscribed, do that as well. Yeah, you'll find all my F1 images at ProStarPix.com. Yeah. For F1 photo books, signed prints by drivers and team principals, merchandise and wall art, head to KimElman.com and for my best images live from the track and all during the week, go to Instagram and search at KimElman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. A few minutes walk to baggage carousel. Oh, why is that so bright? It's dumb. <laughs>